Indiana beats Purdue, and all of a sudden the Boilermakers have lost four of six. Is there something wrong with the best team in the Big Ten? You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, Nate Dickinson with you here on Locked On Big Ten. Be sure to follow along on the show wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube and on Twitter as well. You can find us at Locked On Big Ten, one zero at the end, not T-E-N. I'm Nate Dickinson. Again, we've got a good show lined up for you after a thrilling Saturday in Big Ten basketball. Going to start off going over the Indiana and Purdue game, but of course, Got to talk about the huge comeback for the Iowa Hawkeyes as well against Michigan State. We'll get an update on where everyone stands in the Big Ten as we get into the last day of the second to last weekend in college basketball's regular season. Let's start with the big upset. Indiana sweeps the regular season series with Purdue by beating the Boilermakers in Mackey Arena 79-71. to Hoosiers went down into halftime by four, end up making the comeback and getting themselves a big win on the back of Jalen hood Shafino. The freshman's going to the NBA, and he solidified that he is a legit prospect with a game like this here. 35 points for him to lead the way. Trace Jackson Davis gets himself in some foul trouble, still plays more than 30 minutes, but ends with only 10 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists. A complete game for him, but not obviously the production that the Hoosiers are used to getting out of him. And Hood Shafino took over in his absence, absolutely destroying the Boilermakers' defense. He, he only had, I think it was one or two threes. All of this was inside work and kind of stuff like that, and he was incredible in what he was able to do. Uh, Zach Eady finishes with 26 points and 16 rebounds. He was the big focal point, as always, for the Purdue offense. But the big news for Purdue was that they just didn't shoot. As a team, 35% from the field, 22% from three. And this game can be that kind of a simple. It was not a good shooting day for Purdue. And as a result of that, they end up missing out on some huge advantages on the other side that could have gotten them this game. Again, Purdue shoots that badly and only loses by eight points. Part of the reason is because, well, Purdue had a 33-12 to 12 free throw attempts advantage. Purdue only shot 66% from the free throw line as well. Just a terrible shooting night all around. Also, Purdue out-rebounded Indiana 46-30 to 30 in this game. Those are the kind of numbers where if you're the kind of good that Purdue is, that's ball game. That should be done. Game should be over. Purdue could not win that game. And it was because other than Zach Eady, there really wasn't a whole lot of help for him and nobody was having a good shooting night. Indiana shot well. They were about 50% from the field, but Purdue just did not have the shots to win this game. But also give Indiana's defense credit for that too. Indiana has been great defensively, like shades of what they had been last season over this hot stretch for him. And this was that maybe peaking against the Boilermakers. An incredible defensive showing by Indiana. Had Purdue flustered for much of this game. Zach Eady, again, got his numbers, but was uh, taking up a whole lot of the offensive opportunities for Purdue. So outside of what he was able to do, nobody really else had anything that they could get going and get a big run on Indiana with. Eady was good. And Edie's going to be always good. And he was a whole lot better than Trace Jackson Davis was in this game. But Indiana as a team beat out Purdue as a team in Mackey Arena in this game. It becomes a historic night for Indiana basketball. It's their first win in Mackey and first regular season sweep of Purdue in 10 years since 2012-2013. Also, head coach Mike Woodson got his first win in Mackey Arena as a player or coach. Lost there four times when he was playing for Indiana. Obviously lost last season in the first year as a head coach. He gets his first win inside Mackey Arena as well. The defense did it for Indiana. And that kind of a defensive performance in this kind of an environment and at this stage in the season has me thinking that the Hoosiers are ready to make a tournament run here. I mean, I was not ready even a couple of weeks ago to go that far. I was saying, all right, Indiana's playing good basketball, but can they string things together? Can they be good? This was a game where Trace Jackson Davis was not super effective. And Indiana still came in and not only beat, but was just a better team for all of that second half against Purdue. 
that team looked like it knew what it was doing as it's going into March. And while we talk about that side of the bench, also have to look over to the other side and see a Purdue team that's now lost four out of six games. This is a team that was, in my opinion, the best team in the country. If you ask me, their peak is still best team in the country when they're playing their basketball. But losing four games in your last six, you're a college basketball fan if you're listening. You know how these things go. It is just as much about how good you're playing going into March as it is how good your team actually is. And Purdue is as good as anybody in the country. They've proven that. But they've also proven over the last couple of weeks that something may be going wrong right now, and now is not the time for that to be happening. Four losses in your last six is not good from being at the top of the pinnacle. I mean, they, they were number one when this started. And now they're going to be a pretty good mark off the one line, if you ask me, as far as the NCAA tournament goes. You can't lose that many games this close to the end of the season and stay at that one seat. I, Purdue can obviously play their way back into it as far as the top seeds go. And there's still a Big Ten tournament in which I would very well be fine with you putting your money on Purdue too. Because they are still, in my opinion, the most talented team in the Big Ten. And when they're playing their best, they're better than when your team is playing its best. But Purdue is not playing its best basketball right now. And I try to find why is that. And there's really only one stat that really, really sticks out. First off, there are games in when Purdue has just shot poorly in this stretch. Indiana on Saturday was just a game where the whole team wasn't shooting well. Against Northwestern, Purdue just didn't shoot well. But the main thing is the three-point shooting for Purdue which I think is a reflection of exactly what Zach Eady does in these games and how he gets involved. Like in the four losses that we're talking about over the last six games, Purdue's three-point percentage, 33%, not terrible, but then 23%, 15%, and 22% here against the Hoosiers. Somebody needs to be the kickout guy for Zach Eady because he's going to be able to get his 25 and 15 or whatever he ends up wanting to get every single night. But he cannot be the person that you rely on every single time you throw the ball in there. There's got to be someone to kick out to and who can shoot. Because those shots are going to be there when you're throwing that in and teams start double, triple teaming it. So if he can't kick out and has to rely on himself inside to get points, that's not going to go well. And it also leads to something like more turnovers when you're consistently and more often throwing the ball into that crowded area, as reflected in the statistics. In this six-game stretch, the Boilermakers are averaging 12.6 turnovers per game, far above season average. That is the main thing that is the stats that stick out in this stretch. The Boilermakers are not hitting threes in these games, and they are turning the ball over in ways that are allowing worse teams not only to win games, but at the same time, win games that you would think Purdue would be able to win. It allows an Indiana team to win a game in which Purdue out-rebounds it 46-30 to 30 and goes to the free-throw line 21 more times. Indiana shouldn't win that game if, it, if Purdue is playing anywhere close to what its brand of basketball is. But instead, Boilermakers shoot 22% from three, in this case 35% from the field, and they end up blowing, losing by eight in the second half after going into halftime up at home to their biggest rival it at least is screaming of a team that isn't ready for this NCAA tournament run. They're plenty talented. We know that. I don't have to tell anybody that. But there just is right now that stretch that, where you see loss, 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 loss. And you're wondering, okay, this is going to be the one seed in the Big Ten tournament and has a decent chance to win it, of course. But is this team going to be that team that gets upset in the first couple of rounds, that one or two seed that could really, really fall? I mean, uh, okay, let me be clear. The way that Purdue is just straight up built, uh, there's not really any way that I don't think that I think a 15 or a 16 seed beats them. However, if we get to like second, third round and Purdue finds a team on a hot streak, that could spell doom for a team that, again, has lost four of its last six. Again, you know, you, I don't have to tell you this. You have to be good at the time the tournament's being played, not just a good team. And Purdue is not being very good, or at least as good as it can be at this moment. We'll talk, of course, about the huge comeback in Iowa City here in just a minute on Locked On Big Ten. Before we do that, though, 
Over at FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On, you can bet on Big Ten basketball and anything else that you want to, of course, by getting a no-sweat first bet thanks to us here at Locked On. FanDuel has everything that you could use as far as betting goes. You get the straight-up lines, you get your spreads, you get your prop bets in, you get futures in if you want to bet on, like, next year's Big Ten champion. They probably don't have that lineup yet, but, of course, you can bet on this year's Big Ten champion, this year's NCAA champion right now. And you can bet on basketball, hockey, baseball starting up. Spring training is here. I checked on FanDuel. They do have lines for some spring training games. So you can go over to FanDuel right now and get that first bet for free. Or, well, not for free. Let me rephrase. What you get is you place a $5 bet and you get a $150 free bet credit to FanDuel, win or lose. So bet $5, get $150 back in your account that you can bet with at fanduel.com slash locked on. You go to fanduel.com slash locked on, get a $5 bet in, get it $150 in bets back, whether you win or lose that bet at all. It's at fanduel.com slash locked on. One more time, fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more at Fanduel. Thanks again for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If you're just all basketball when basketball's in season, you need to go listen to Isaac and Andy. They do a really good job. And what we got to keep football in here and make sure that everyone gets into knowing what's going on on the gridiron you can get a fully basketball-dedicated podcast over there. Let's get into Big Ten basketball stuff now. Iowa, a huge, huge, huge comeback against Michigan State. One of the more remarkable games that we have seen all season in the Big Ten. I mean, I had this segment done. This segment was going to be, is Tyson Walker just have the best week of anyone in the Big Ten this season? Because he put up numbers. Tyson Walker was great. He ended up with 31 points. He was hitting everything. And as they mentioned on the broadcast, as things were happening, and as Purdue was extending its, or I'm sorry, as Michigan State was extending its lead in that second half, Tyson Walker was not only hitting everything, but hitting it at the end of shot clocks, hitting threes. Everyone on Michigan State was hitting threes. But the way that Walker was taking over this game, it was over. I mean, it was over. Besides just that, it was over on the scoreboard. Up 13 points with whatever it was, a minute 40-something left. It ends up being up 10 points with 48 seconds left. And this was the most remarkable stat they mentioned on that call. Up 10 points with 48 seconds left. Michigan State still went 5 of 6 from the free throw line. And ends up losing that lead and going to overtime. You get a turnover in there and then uh, 5 straight threes it was I think at the end. An incredible finish. I mean, this was 101 to 101 at the end of regulation. You get to 116 to 113 or 112 to 106 by the time you get to the end of overtime. It was an incredible display of basketball, an incredible comeback. I mean, the Michigan State stats are just remarkable. Shot 62% from the field, made 11 of 13 three-pointers. Tyson Walker, again, incredible. And that's the losing side. That's the losing side of this game because Iowa just absolutely went off, got itself again, a turnover when it needed to. One missed free throw at the very end by one of the Big Ten's best free throw shooters from Michigan State ends up getting Iowa that tie. And then once it hit overtime, Michigan State, I mean, almost understandably so, just kind of unraveled. Well, Iowa took the lead and the crowd was obviously insane. The people who were still there, people left beforehand. And Iowa just kind of took over in overtime, as you may expect them to after Michigan State blew that. Also, the stare down. I, I haven't even mentioned the stare down yet. Fran McCaffrey going at a referee for a solid 15, 30 seconds, just looking at him after he got a technical earlier in the game. I mean, you can talk whatever you want about some of the calls that were made in this game. There were definitely some questionable calls the way of Michigan State near the end there. But, but that was insane. That was one of the most remarkable things that happened in all of college basketball this season. And it's still like may not have been the thing people were talking most about at the end of that game. I mean, that was incredible, incredible Big Ten basketball, Big Ten moments, Big Ten comeback. It was maybe the game of the year. I mean, we've had, I think, now three or four different times I've said that is the game of the year that we just saw. That That's not something that's going to be beat. Maybe others can get up there and match it, but that on Saturday was not something that is going to be beat. I hope you were able to watch it live. I was able to turn on like the last five minutes and I, I, got, I 
obviously got the best parts. So it was an incredible game, an incredible stare down to add to the incredible legacy of what Fran McCaffrey has done on the basketball court this season and in his career. Remarkable, remarkable, everything that you could ask for if you're hosting a Big Ten podcast or if you're a Big Ten fan, which I am both. Also, Nebraska beat Minnesota, 78-67. to That was the other score of the game. Good for them. And that wraps up the coverage from Big Ten basketball on Saturday. We'll finish up with some news from around the Big Ten. And, of course, we've got games today to get to and picks to give you from FanDuel as well. Let's start off with the news from Saturday, though. Indiana has won the Big Ten men's swimming and diving title. If you don't know, Indiana is one of the many powerhouses in swimming and diving in the Big Ten, but they really, really dominate it's five of the last seven for the Hoosiers and 29th overall. Also, the Big Ten men's hockey bracket has been announced. Minnesota is the lone team that gets the bye into the single elimination semifinal. On the other side, it will be a three-game series the upcoming weekend between number two seed Michigan and seven seed Wisconsin, as well as a matchup between number three seed Ohio State and six seed Penn State, and between four seed Notre Dame and five seed Michigan State. And finally, in news from around the conference, Wisconsin took the Men's Indoor Track and Field Championship on Saturday as well. Let's get to bets for the day. Illinois is on the road at Ohio State. They are a four-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. I'm taking the Illini there. Ohio State is pretty simply the worst team to put money on in the Big Ten. I will not be betting on the Buckeyes I, I, the rest of the season pretty confidently now. No way to put money on the spread if you're betting on the Buckeyes side. Uh, Northwestern plus six and a half at Maryland. I got another road team. This one, an underdog. I really just think that these are two pretty evenly matched teams. Betting against Maryland at home is scary because the Terrapins are pretty good. But I do think that Northwestern's playing well enough basketball right now as well that these two teams are going to play a good game. I was debating which side to go here. This is by far my least confident of the three picks for the day. But if you're going to give me six and a half points and I'm wavering over which team I think is going to win the game, I'll take the six and a half points. I do think that's just a little bit too much for what I think is going to be a close game. Of course, close games can end up being one by seven or eight at the end. But I think six and a half, this one is hopefully going to be going down to the wire. So let's just root for a root, root for a close game at the end and take Northwestern plus six and a half. Finally, Wisconsin at Michigan, my only home team pick of the day. I'm going with Michigan minus five and a half. Uh, Michigan, I think, is just a hotter team right now. Wisconsin's gotten itself some solid wins as of late, too, but I think Michigan's just the team that's playing better basketball at the moment, playing better team basketball, and also the Wolverines need it more. I mean, they're on the edge of being pretty much out of it. They need to win a whole lot of games here down the stretch. Wisconsin is obviously feeling the bubble pressure as well, but they're not do or die in this situation, although picking up a win on the road against Michigan or maybe more so avoiding a loss on the road against Michigan is going to be plenty much of a motivator given how much they've had to do to claw back into this NCAA tournament picture after there are plenty of people who had them very closely on the outside looking in not too long ago. We'll see what ends up happening, but I think, again, Michigan's just a better team. They're more desperate, and they're at home. That's enough to get me five and a half points for the Wolverines. That'll do it here for Locked On Big Ten. Thanks again for making the show your first listen today. For your second listen, check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, hear from big name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for tuning in to Locked On Big Ten. Be sure to follow us on wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube and Twitter as well. It's Locked On Big Ten, one zero at the end, not T-E-N. I'm Nate Dickinson at Nate with Sports. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.